Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, I've been gone from Monday through today when I'm recording this, which is Thursday the 10th, and uh, obviously I'm back on Friday. I just wanted to let you know I was at a, what's called the Priest Convocation. It's a gathering, all the priests convoking, you could say, being called together by the Archbishop to, you know, sometimes we'll have speakers, we'll have special work to do, and this one was a little different than all the ones that I've been in for 24 years. In it, we are really trying to, the Archbishop wants us to begin to really look at renewing our mission as an archdiocese, but he wants to work with the priests first, So those because those are the persons, we priests are the, the closest persons to the Archbishop to kind of, let's say, manage or expand or encourage or basically you know, work the, the mission. And of course we go, what do we do? Our mission is to encourage our parishioners and to uh, you know, lift them up in the faith. So we got together. I was asked to be, you can say, the MC for the conversations that we would have. Uh, we used this book. This is a special book from the group called Acts 29 and Father John Ricardo. It's called According to the Plan I Will Show You. And it's very thin, just a little leaflet thing here. And it's asking us then to basically do, have spiritual conversations. And this is something we've not done before as a presbyterate. The presbyterate is the title, the name of the, the, all the priests. So we then were asked many questions, and four specific questions to look at, and then we reflected on them. And I was the one that was asking the questions to the priests and then helping them to then spend time reflecting on them. Uh, most importantly, we spent 30 minutes each time for each question to then pray before the Blessed Sacrament and ask God the question that I was proposing. And again, it's, and again, it's from this, this booklet. The first one was, the first conversation, and the first question to ask was, Lord, what are those gifts you have so generously given to us? And as I do this, I want you to ask this question of yourself. Lord, what are those gifts you have so generously given to me or to your family? In our case, it's the priests. And what we did, we had various ways of doing this, but the, the most successful way was to then spend that 30 minutes, pray, and just listen. This is a synodal process of listening. This time, listening to the Lord, the Holy Spirit, uh, work with us and give us a word of some kind of knowledge. Maybe it's a, a single word or a phrase. Maybe it's an idea. And then I would ask the priest, one by one, we would then go around with a microphone and have them share what those things were. What would you think? Now, this needs to be done through prayer. So again, the first question, what are those gifts you have so generously given to us? What are the gifts that God's given you? It's important to know these things. We have all been given unique gifts. Sometimes we might think not, but truly we have. And as we know them, then we can recognize God as a, a lover and a giver of gifts. The second conversation was, what is our biggest wound? What is our biggest wound? And that may be something you want to think about. What is the biggest wound in your life? Now, I had to disting distinguish at one point because we I was getting a lot of ideas that were coming at me uh, and we were writing them all down, but I was uh, managing it. And I noticed that as we were getting kind of working with this, that sometimes either we'd start preaching to each other or we were confusing the wounds with symptoms. Now you may be able to find the wounds by looking at your symptoms. This is a good way to do it. So what are the things that bother you the most? And what, where do they come from? What wounds are there that you find? So maybe you don't trust people. What has happened in your life that has caused you to have that issue, that fruit. It's a bad fruit, but it has a wound. What wound happened maybe when you were younger that now you don't trust? And you can go through all kinds of things. There's lots of wounds that we have, but we may need to look at those fruits to know, or the symptoms to know what those wounds are. But to identify those wounds is important because we often come from those wounds. And if we can identify them, then that's the first step to not being victim of them. And so that's what we did. We spent time, again, in all these conversations as a group, we just shared what those things were. We didn't have to explain them. And then we went into 
smaller groups based on our vicariates, our area parishes, and some of them combined, to see if we can figure out, is there something that God is saying to us as a whole as priests? And in your, your case, maybe it's just you, it might be though, or your family, or maybe your group of friends, maybe you and your spouse. But what is that biggest wound that you have between you, know, you and your wife, your, your husband, or your family, or coworkers? Once we know that wound, then we can start working with that. We can actually ask God to heal the wound. And when that wound is healed, there's potential now that those fruits don't happen anymore, the rotten fruits that we have. Okay, the third conversation is, what is hell's strategy for us, Lord? What is hell's strategy for us, Lord? You know, in our lives, you know, God knows us. But so does our enemy, so does Satan, so does the devil. Hell has a strategy, and it may not be just one strategy. If you're a good strategist, strategist, you have many methods, you have many things. If you're gonna accomplish something, you may have many ways to come at it. So, but we did this process again, and we asked, what are the different strategies that Satan wants to let's say, attack us, based on possibly the wound that we recognized. How about yourself? What is going on in your life that God keeps, or that Satan, I should say, keeps working on you, digging at that wound and making your life miserable? And the fourth question. Where are you asking us, Lord, to maybe refocus our time, resources, and energy? In other words, so we, we can be fruitful. So once we know the strategies, we can thwart them. Once we know our wounds, then we know that those fruits don't have to weigh us down. We can actually have them healed. And now, knowing these things, what are we going to do with our life? How are we going to spend our time, our resources, and our energies? Where are we spending them poorly? Where are they distracting us? Where are they not helping us? These are the things that we as a presbyterate, as a group of priests, started asking ourselves. And of course, this was all for the Archbishop to then listen to and then ponder. And at the very end of the convocation, he gave his kind of a reflection, what he was hearing, not only just his own personal time, but what was resonating, what he, what he was hearing in his heart, and also what he was hearing from us priests. And that's what we did. We did that for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I found it be, to be very, very faith, uh, fruitful for us. And again, that's part of the renewing of our, our mission as, a, as an archdiocese, so that we can go into our parishes and start helping people in this way. Because we all struggle with lots of things. We're all broken in some way. And Satan is real. He knows. He's clever. He's a deceiver. He knows our weaknesses. And he has a strategy to come against us. But we know this, that the Lord has conquered him. And as long as we have the Lord with us, we can overcome all of these things. And if it's not in this world, it will certainly be in the world to come, in heaven. But in the meantime, we all want joy. And this is the, one of the paths to do this, is to really take a look at this, to discern what those things are. Well, folks, I just want to leave you with that as a short kind of reflection with you. Uh, this weekend, I'll be offering the homily. I ask that you would pray for me. Still working on it right now as I make this video. I have some ideas. And they'll be partially something of what you might hear. This might be some good background of where I might be coming from for the homily. But uh, pray for me. And pray for all those who are coming to church this weekend. Pray for those who can't come to Mass. Those who will be watching online. Uh, those who maybe are sick and not able to come. Pray for all those people who are ra being ravaged by the destruction of hurricanes in the east and southeast of our country. Lots of things to pray for. And I'll see you this weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.